Hello, and welcome to JPZilla. On this channel, we often talk about a certain obscure Japanese television franchise almost no one knows about, a hidden gem called Ultraman. We also like to discuss a particularly popular franchise you may have heard about, Star Wars. In this video, we will analyze two villains from this franchise to determine how Ultraman actually wrote a better villain than Star Wars. Now before you get offended, I will just say right off the bat that I am not talking about Darth Vader who to this day is one of, if not the best villain in cinema history, period. In this video, I will be talking about the particularly lackluster villain Kylo Ren and the enigmatic Jugglist Juggler. When the sequel trilogy hit theaters for the first time in 2015, one of the things that disappointed fans the most about that movie was the disappointing Revan knockoff Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren is a Jedi turned villain who seeks the darkness, but continues to feel the pull to the light the opposite of his infamous grandfather Darth Vader, who felt a pull to the darkness as a Jedi. While this is a fascinating premise for a villain, the conflict within Ren resulted in him being a lackluster villain who could not stand on his own as a valid threat, especially after the death of Snoke. In contrast, when Ultimate Orb came out in Japan a year later in 2016, the captivating villain Jugglist Juggler quickly became a favorite among fans. Like Kylo Ren, he too is a hero turned villain who feels the irresistible call of the light. However, where Kylo Ren failed is where Juggler succeeded, and here is how. Oh, and here is a quick spoiler warning for this awesome show, as well as Star Wars Episode 7, 8, and 9. Reason 1. Juggler is a valid threat. Unlike Kylo Ren, whose uncertainty and unwillingness to hurt Rey made him look like a non-threat from the start, Juggler had a chance to establish himself before the show gave us a glimpse into his inner struggle. This establishment showed that, in spite of his conflict, he was still a deadly adversary and competent villain. However, the show does give hints throughout that Juggler has a lighter side than he shows, such as this scene in Episode 20, Revenge's Trigger.闇こそが光に勝る力だということに俺に光など必要なかった本当にそうなのかなあなた私にこう言ったよね私の中にもあなたと同じように闇が眠ってる誰の心の中にも闇があって光があるなら these signs are eventually fulfilled, and Juggler is redeemed, helping to undo some of the damage he had caused. Reason 2. Motivation There is a lot, a lot, that does not make sense about The Last Jedi. One of those things is Kylo Ren's origin story. Not only does Luke have to break character and try to kill his own nephew, but Kylo Ren's reaction is a bit unorthodox. I get why he would have been mad at Luke, but why lash out at everyone else? If anything, wouldn't seeing what the dark side did to Luke make Kylo even more cautious of the effects of the dark side? On the other hand, Juggler's origin makes a lot more sense. Juggler was once the protagonist Guy's companion and even mentor, but when Guy was chosen to be the Hero of Light, Juggler began to feel a bit jealous that he was passed up to be the chosen hero. The problem worsens when they are sent on a mission together to Planet Cannon, where there is a war going on for the fruit of a powerful tree known as the Tree of Life. The inhabitants worship this tree, and evil Dr. Psyche wants the fruit for his dastardly schemes. After losing someone in battle, Juggler decides to cut down the tree to end the war. The inhabitants treat him as public enemy number one, and at this point, Juggler once again felt betrayed, as he is portrayed as the villain for simply doing what he felt was right. Over time, he comes to think of himself as having been betrayed by the light altogether, and embraces the only thing that he feels he has left, the darkness of the void. In Juggler's mind, he was rejected by the light, and destined for the darkness, so he thinks he's just following his destiny. Reason 3. Effectiveness 
This ties into Reason 1, but it bears its own section. The first section mostly went over how their inner conflict was handled, and how that affected them as antagonists. This section is specifically about their feats. Kylo Ren, for the most part, probably did more for the Resistance than anyone else, including the First Order he supposedly worked for. Even killing the worst adversary of the Resistance, and Rey. Snow. This would have been acceptable if Kylo Ren could have stepped in to be an even scarier villain, but this just wasn't feasible. And because of this, he negates most of what actually made him a threat to the Resistance in the first place, because he helped them more than he could have ever hurt them. Juggler, on the other hand, was much more competent than that. Believe it or not, he too actually killed one of Ultraman Orb's enemies, Don Nostra. But that was because Don Nostra betrayed Juggler, and because Juggler was just using him all along to get what he wanted. If Kylo Ren was just using Snoke, and was secretly more powerful than Snoke, that would have been a much more interesting plot. But as it is, it's just a major letdown. Among his other feats are actually nearly killing Orb in hand-to-hand -hand combat, playing a long game in which Orb defeating Kaiju actually helped juggler schemes, and actually pulling off those schemes and unleashing the most powerful monster in the show twice. Reason 4. Conclusion Not only did Kylo Ren live as an incompetent villain, he actually died as an incompetent hero too. In this case, the writers were clearly trying to parallel Darth Vader's death at the end of Return of the Jedi. However, that death served its purpose better for two reasons. Firstly, Darth Vader's redemption was much more of a twist than Kylo's, which everyone could see coming since Episode 7. And him dying to save his son was the most extreme way he could have redeemed himself. And he needed a much more extreme redemption than Kylo did, because Vader did far worse things. Like killing the entire Jedi Order, for one. Secondly, Darth Vader's death fulfills the Chosen One prophecy, which says that the Chosen One would destroy the Sith and bring balance to the Force. Vader was a Sith, so he had to go, according to the prophecy. Unlike Vader's death, Kylo's serves little purpose in the story, especially since we see Rey use the same ability, the same ability which supposedly killed Kylo Ren earlier in the movie, and Rey did not suffer any negative effects from using it. So this was just a poor attempt to get Kylo Ren out of the way, and give him a heroic sacrifice. However, it just came across as unbelievable. Especially when keeping him alive would have actually been a better conclusion. However, the Ultraman franchise never likes to waste a villain, and so Juggler just avoided this problem by not dying. Unlike Vader, who completely redeemed himself by sacrificing himself for Luke, Juggler still has a ways to go, as the last we saw of him in Orb, he was still conflicted about who he was supposed to be. In fact, Juggler, seven years after his debut, still has a lot of story potential that could be uncovered, and for a franchise which goes through villains like none other, that is saying a lot. To conclude, Kylo Ren was a letdown because there is such good story potential that either wasn't capitalized on, like an ending where he actually ends up rebuilding the Jedi Order after his redemption, or was botched, like how poorly his internal conflict was handled throughout his entire story arc. Juggler, on the other hand, presents a similar struggle to Kylo, but pulls it off far better than he, and another major difference is that Juggler is actually competent. So maybe Disney should sit down and watch some Ultraman sometime, so they can actually learn good storytelling. But what do you think? Do you think Juggler is a good villain? Do you think Kylo is a bad villain? Or do you disagree with me entirely? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below.